Ladies, I don't get it. <laughs> Ladies, I don't get it. Robbie Jaganato. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, for getting my name right. <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters, distinguished guests, judges, and ladies. <laughs> ladies, I want to tell you, I get it. And by get it, I mean I don't get it. <laughs> ladies, I don't get why you put yourselves through the misery, misery of a diet. Why you suffer through the pain of grooming. <laughs> Why? Why, tell me, do you suffer the awkwardness of someone hitting on you? For what? Men? <laughs> Look, I don't know about you, but men are ugly. <laughs> do you know how many mirrors I've cracked? And let me tell you something, we don't smell all that good either. <laughs> but I've recently come to appreciate your situation. I've had a chance to walk a mile in your high heels, and those are very hard to balance in my <laughs> You see, six months ago, I got married. <laughs> Thank you, we're registered at Home Depot. <laughs> now, as a preparation for that wedding, my wife and I had to go through similar things together. For example, we both had to diet. <laughs> you see where this is headed. <laughs> now for my wife, dealing with the diet was a piece of cake. Not so much for me. And on the first week of this miserable lifestyle, anytime someone talked about sizzling bacon, or a T-bone steak, or grilled chicken, I started drooling. And I'm a vegetarian! <laughs> <laughs> By the end of the second week, Anytime I walked by one of those freshly toasted bagels or a, a newly grilled pizza, a newly baked pizza, I'd feel this invisible hand, the aroma pulling me towards it, begging me to eat it. By the end of the third week, this is insane, by the end of the third week, I started dreaming about food. <laughs> In the middle of the night, I'd be going, oh, oh, baby, yeah. Oh, it's so good. Put some maple syrup on it. <laughs> I was fantasizing about pancakes. <laughs> and I asked my wife, once she stopped laughing at me, I asked my wife, baby, why? Why do you put up with this? She goes, honey, you don't get it. It's okay. Huh? That's not an answer. And it didn't get much better than that. As preparation for a South Indian Hindu wedding, the groom, hello, <laughs> has to be shirtless. <laughs> now you see the top of my head? Picture the exact opposite for the rest of my body. <laughs> care of this. I heard Nair was a good way to get rid of him. So I figured I'd try some on my arms. <laughs> the package, the package says put a smidgen of this on for two to three minutes, five minutes at most. Now, I'm thinking, this instruction's for girls. <laughs> <laughs> they have teeny tiny amounts of hair on them. I have AstroTurf on my arm. <laughs> so I put a bottle of Nair on each arm. <laughs> and I leave it on for longer than five minutes. In fact, I start cleaning my apartment. <laughs> I am walking around, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling energetic, I'm feeling incredibly warm. <laughs> And I can smell my neighbor, my neighbor must be cooking something. <laughs> like a chicken kebab or something. And I'm starting to drool. Oh, it's me. It's me! <laughs> so I figured, I should probably find a professional to humiliate me. 
<laughs> I go to the salon. I go to the salon and I walk in. And it is such a nice, relaxing atmosphere. I walk in and I can smell lilac in the air. I can hear Enya playing in the background. Sail away, sail away. <laughs> I tell this lady, listen, I need to take care of the hair on my chest and my eyebrow too. People always think I'm upset. <laughs> she lies me down. She lies me down and she says, well, thread your eyebrows. They shouldn't call it threading. Have you seen what they use for this? It looks like rope. <laughs> I'm lying down, I'm relaxed. She leans over me and goes, oh, oh that is good. <laughs> Are we done yet? <laughs> what do you mean that was just one? <laughs> and that wasn't enough. She takes me to the back room, makes me lie down, starts smothering hot wax on me like someone's buttering a piece of toast. <laughs> she rubs this wax strip on me and then looks at me with this zen-like expression on her face. This will hurt just a little bit. <laughs> I thought she ripped my nipple off. <laughs> Still there. And I asked my wife as I walk out of there, baby, why? Why do you put up with this? She goes, honey, you don't understand it, but it's okay. It's worth it. That's still not an answer. But ladies, I have to say, with all that exfoliation and dieting, I look good. Yeah. <laughs> so good that all those mirrors I tracked, now when I looked at them, my reflection went <laughs> And I'm in the gym working out. I am exercising, I am working up a sweat, and this guy comes up to me. The guy comes up to me and says, Hey, I see you working out here every day. You're looking really good. Ah, what a nice fellow, huh? <laughs> yeah, you exercise, man. Yeah, so how do I get this body? Uh, he just wants to look like me. Who can blame him? <laughs> well, you gotta exercise in the morning and afternoon. No, no, no. How do I get this body? <laughs> can we just be friends? <laughs> and I ask my wife, baby, why? Why do you put up with this? She goes, honey, it's okay. It's worth it. I love you. But that's when I get it that I'm not supposed to get it. <laughs> Ladies, you are a wonderful mystery. We're not gonna try and solve you. Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs>